Who trying to straighten this camera up? Oh, I've been at an event all day. I have been at the 10X tour of Grant Cardone. If you haven't heard of Grant Cardone before, he does some pretty cool stuff. He's a motivational speaker, businessman, he's got everything, just does all sorts of stuff. I first come across him from his vlogs, his YouTube, and his podcasts. And I've been following him now for probably two years, maybe. Yeah, probably two years or maybe a year and a half. Uh, one of my clients introduced me to him, who was actually there today, who gave me this book. Um, and I came along, so I've never really been to a business, what is it called, like a business conference. I've been to a lot of fitness ones, and I've been to, yeah, mainly all fitness, and I've not really liked them because the fitness industry is full of some douchebags. But I've been to them, and I've enjoyed them. But this time, and obviously now I'm more interested in the kind of business side of things, I've gone down the business route. One video I've been meaning to make for a long time and I haven't made is because, to be honest, there's like, oh, people aren't really interested, people don't really care. Um, and I've always wanted to kind of explain my own personal story and hopefully it might inspire someone to do something or people might just be interested and if you're not interested, I don't care. But I've also took a bit of a hammering recently, we could say hammering, could say I've now officially got people who do hate me um, whether it's because my actions I'm not sure or because of the brand I've created I'm not sure but for some reason a lot of people have took a disliking to me recently do I care no I couldn't give a shit but I thought I would kind of give my story I'm never going to react I'm never going to bite to these comments that these people have made or these groups of people in actual fact have made different people different groups um, but I could give my story and obviously the people who know me will know kind of my background and where I've come from but I've never kind of told you lot, I've never told social, I've never told Instagram, I've never told YouTube um, that where kind of me, my dad, my brother, fitness works has come from. So I'm going to try not to drag it out for too long because I don't want it to be boring but hopefully this can kind of offer a bit of inspiration to people who and maybe further down the ranks, just a PT, just leaving school, kind of people that generally aren't meant to do well or aren't meant to have their own thing or are always meant to be inside this shitty little education system we have that pushes you out the end to work in some crappy factory or to follow the nine to five rule, just to try and break out of that horrible, 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 horrible lifestyle some people have, which personally I could not stand, that's why I've never done it and you'll probably I'll probably come into it and tell you a bit about it but that's the reason why I've probably lost more jobs well I've lost I've lost every job pretty much but we'll go back to we'll go back to how far should we go back we'll go back to school so at school I was a nightmare and I mean a friggin nightmare um, so was my brother I think my old man was pretty much a nightmare too. Maybe just, just a Gibson thing. We were all pretty bad except Finley. He was all right, the little one. So I've got me, Matt, Tim, Finn. There's four of us, four boys. So growing up, you can imagine it's like bloody WWE. We're fucking fighting all the time, shouting, swearing, destroying stuff, breaking the house, ruining mum's stuff, just generally being pretty bad. Because I'm 28 and then my youngest is uh, 17. Um, and then Matt's in between that, Tim's in between that. So back at school, we were all pretty much a nightmare. I was pretty bad, I got ex I excluded four or five times. I failed all my GCSEs. The reason I did do that is because I was, I am very hot, well, I'm quite badly dyslexic. I can't read too well, I can read, but I just don't do it because it takes so long. Spelling, non-existent. If you ever got anything on social from the old days when, before Chris took it, um, you can tell that that was me because it didn't make sense or I'd be sent it seven times like what does that mean Jack? I'm like sorry I can't I don't I don't really rarely send emails now if you're probably in a whatsapp conversation with me You'll probably realize that too because generally nine times out of ten my whatsapp Doesn't make sense when I message don't make sense just things don't make sense But that's because uh, I can't do that side, but there's other sides which I'm pretty good at so GCSE was I failed most and failed maths uh, I think I've got D's in English. I got the only two things I've got B and plus, well, I only got B's actually, was PE because I love the theory, no not the theory, but the theory side of PE I like so I enjoyed the body and I enjoyed how we performed and RE and the only reason I got a B in RE is because RE is all about opinions and I'm a very opinionated person so I managed to 
So I managed to get quite a good grade in RE because I put my opinion across to obviously the, uh, I put my opinion across obviously quite well. And like you probably know I am very opinionated. If you watch my social before you'll realize I'm a very opinionated person. So then I left school, went to college. I did a national certificate in sports and something, sports and coaching or something, because I wasn't, didn't have enough grades to get through to um, the diploma. So I did a certificate which was even lower. So I did a certificate which wasn't even a diploma. And you couldn't really get you into university. I applied to five universities. They all said no. Even in my first year at college, the tutor asked my parents, do you think sport and this kind of education is for Jack? And after then, I kind of buckled down a little bit. I had part-time bar jobs, got sacked. I had part-time coaching jobs. That's the only coaching job I managed to stick out to a part-time coaching job, which was David Lloyd in Swindon. I then got to the end of year one at college, and then there came the opportunity. No, you then did year two. Then I applied for universities to do strength and condition and stuff, but because I didn't do very well at college, I wasn't allowed to go to university, obviously. So I'm bloody glad I didn't get to university too. Um, would have probably been, I wouldn't probably be sat here explaining to you where I've come from if I went to university personally because nine times out of ten I personally think university is a load of shit and you don't need university if you have a passion for something and you have a drive for something. Um, then I, then the tutor came in and was like, why don't you think about doing a personal training course? And I was like, ah, oh, not really me, but anyway, I decided. I've got to do something because I didn't want to go back to working full time as a barman. My old man at the time was a, a well, a chippy he had his own kind of um, building company, building firm, and I did a bit of work with him in the winter and in the summer. And I was like, no chance am I doing this? I'm not getting horrible muddy hands, cold hands, muddy covered in shit, and I'm not working fucking out in the mud, cold and rain. I did it for about six weeks. Absolutely hated it. I was like, right, I'll probably rather go and do a personal training course for the next six weeks of my life, hate that, than go and dig fucking holes in the garden. So I did a personal training course, did it for this whole six weeks, passed it. Actually, in actual fact, I failed one module. I had to do it twice. Then I finally passed it just. I was like, do you know what? I actually do really enjoy this. So my job at David Lloyd at the time was part-time coach during the summer. Summer came around. I went over to back to Swindon, down to the lakes, where we went down to, um, and I carried on my job down there as a part-time sports coach, teaching kids going into sports, going into schools, teaching them how to do stuff, teach them swimming, teach them football, cricket, all sorts of kind of multi-sports, which I did kind of enjoy. I enjoyed it for a short period of time. Then, because I was a fully qualified PT, I tried to get into the gym, and they're like, no, we can't do it, can't do it, can't do it, jobs going. Finally, after about a million times, of me asking the manager, can I work in the gym, can I work in the gym? I managed to get some cover just to be a gym instructor. So I started as a gym instructor, then slowly kind of switched over into having a few clients, did four, five, six, seven clients. And then I was commuting and back and forth to my girlfriend at the time who lived in Bristol and my family at home and the lake. So I was traveling miles and miles and miles. And I was like, this is getting a bit ridiculous. So I got a job at Fitness First in Coventry. So I had to pay Fitness First £750 a month in rent just to be able to PT out their facility. I had to get up at six in the morning, go hand out leaflets, do free taste sessions, TRX sessions, I had to do free boot camps, free classes. And during this, while I'm trying to build my own business, I broke my leg. I got drunk in town, broke my leg. So then I has in plaster. So I'm trying to get the kind of um, confidence to PT clients, but also build a kind of rapport in the gym while I'm hobbling around and crutches. And to be honest, I think that kind of did me a favor because a lot of people came over and was like, what have you done? I'm like, oh, I broke my leg. I, I said I slipped over on the ice, but at the time, I didn't want to admit that I was out on the town pissed, fell off a curb and bust my leg. So I kind of said to everybody that I did it in the icy cold weather. I just slipped and broke my leg. So it's a bit of a conversation, a bit of a uh, icebreaker. Probably wouldn't suggest breaking your leg to get yourself in the door with clients though, but I grafted and grafted and grafted that, then I went to a festival. Went to a festival and I broke my jaw. Serious. Six months in, I'd broken my leg. Finished, got off crutches, back to training. Went to a festival in September, fell over, broke my jaw. So I had a split jaw through here, so I had to have an operation, put all my jaw back to place. So I was off work then for another week. Bearing in mind, I'm still paying my rent here, so I haven't actually made any money yet. I've made enough just to cover my rent the last few months, but I haven't actually made a single penny. So I'm kind of just living off nothing at the moment. 
Um, luckily, I came back after my draw after a couple of weeks. My clients I previously had stayed around. I was talking like this for ages, but my clients still st stuck with me. Then a few months down the line, um, after my jaw was fixed and everything was fixed, I kind of got into the swing of things. And I've always been a worker. I've always worked, especially for something I love. And I love fitness, you know I do. Um, I've worked a lot in fitness. So I grafted and I grafted and I grafted and I grafted till finally I was probably one of the, no, I'd say I was probably after, because a couple of the good boys left. At the time I left, I was by far the busiest PT there. Um, I was probably doing 40, 50 hours of my own time, right? my own clients, sorry, there, and paying obviously my £750 a month floor rent, which to me really annoyed me, but I still managed to earn a pretty decent living. I was then approached by a guy in, I was then approached by a guy in Warwick who wanted me to come on board. He wanted me to come on board to his private personal training studio. So at this time, Alex Myers, Studio CB34, if you know me, you already know about the studio. They asked me to come on board and help them and kind of build myself up. So I was running two jobs at once. I was running a PT in Warwick while I was PTing over in Coventry still. In the end, I managed to drag most of my clients from Coventry over to Warwick. I had to drop a few, but majority followed me. And those clients I still actually do train today. I trained them at the weekend, like the week just gone a couple of days ago. So I managed to train those clients up now I managed to switch those clients around and bring them over to Warwick. At Warwick I then worked for Studio CB34. I was still fairly new, then I was just getting into my bodybuilding, I was just finishing playing rugby, I was just trying to transitioning into more bodybuilding and more kind of concentrating on myself, which I don't know if it's a good thing, but I learned a lot from bodybuilding. Um, I then built up a pretty busy busy, busy client base there. I was doing 45, 50 sessions a week, which to be honest, I personally feel that's a bit too much, but it was 14 sessions a day sometimes, just go, 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 go. It was like a conveyor belt of people just churning through PT, churning, 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 but I was earning myself a bloody good wage. So then what I was doing, I've always, then what I was doing, I've always been quite a saver, so I've always saved sections on my salary i've always saved stuff and put it away i've never been one to go out and buy the best of everything i know i have a few nice things but really i don't have a lot of nice stuff i kind of drive or go around in fitness work stuff i wear 40 pound vans i kind of i don't i used to i had a stage where i used to buy four five hundred pound trainers and then i kind of snapped out and be like what are you doing all that money i could put back into things and create so much more stuff. So I have, then I went, I stopped doing that. And uh, I put all the money in savings. And then like the, like society has kind of drilled into us and like the shit education system and like everything that we've been fed into our brains from our parents and from our teachers to buy a house, safety, house, safety, house. Best thing you can buy with your money is a house, this, that and the other. So I kind of was brainwashed into, yeah, I need to buy my own house. So I was saving, 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 saving. I had about 12, 12 grand in my bank. And then one of my clients said he'll help me buy a house. He was a property developer. I then went along with that for a while. was trying to buy a £240,000 house in Warwick. Um, that fell through, which I'm pretty glad about. Then I was going to buy a £200,000 house in Coventry. Then the mortgage wouldn't go through. There was complications. And then I had one more shot of buying another house in Coventry again. Um, and I was meant to view it on the, on the Wednesday. And I was on the weekend, I think I went into work, and after the weekend I was like, I know I have more than this in me. Um, not necessarily I know I'm better than a PT, because I'm not, I just knew I was better than the place I was at at the time. I knew I was better than the, I knew I was better than the, sorry, but I knew I was better than the studio I was at at the time. Um, I wanted to be in a, a busy environment, I wanted to be in a functional facility, I wanted to be able to service my clients better. And I couldn't do this in this little studio, I wanted just to, be able to do more stuff. So I was like, screw this, I'm not doing this anymore. I've always wanted to own a gym. I know I said I'd open one by the time I was 30, but fuck it. I have nothing, I don't own a house, I don't own a car, I don't have any light abilities, I don't have any kids, I don't have any, I had a girlfriend at the time, that's all I have, I have a girlfriend. So I was like, do you know what? If it all goes tits up, at least I've tried. So then I went to the bank, walked up Kenneth High Street, been at Kenneth High Street there and back. There is, at the time, this was what, six years ago, no, five years ago now? There was probably, I don't know, I wanna say eight banks. All the major banks were up and down there, HSBC, Lloyds, Barclays, Country Building Society, NatWest, Nationwide. I went into every single one of them with my 10,000 pounds and said, right, there's 10,000 pounds, I need 20 more. So I needed 30,000 pounds. I budgeted 30,000 pounds to open my first facility. So I had 10, 
went to every single bank, put an application, sat down with the business manager. This time they still had the business section of every kind of uh, nationwide. I gave all my details, I filled out the forms, I spoke to them for hours, gave them a little business plan. Every single one, every single, I did that solidly for two days by the way, every single person was like, no, 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 no one would lend me a penny. And they're like, why? They're like, because you're too young. I was 23 years old, they're like, you're too young, you're inexperienced, we're not gonna lend you 20 grand, you need to kind of fund it yourself. So that was obviously pissed me off. I was like, what? I didn't know really where to go. So what I did was I, kind of thought about it for a little while. My mum was like, why don't you get some grants? But I was fully working, I had my own savings, couldn't go to Prince's Trust, couldn't go to many kind of, many trusts really, because it was to kind of help people who didn't have much get better. And at the time, I still had much, I had a roof over my head, I had a really good job, I had quite a big income, so I had a lot of stuff. The banks just wouldn't give me money. Private investors, I probably could have gone down if I wanted to, but probably not, because I was 23 years old. Who's gonna trust a 23 year old, 20 grand of their money? Anyway, I got an email from my mom, probably on the Monday, I think, saying, why don't you check out CWRT, Coaches of Warwickshire's kind of young entrepreneur loans. So I dropped them an email, probably a very, very, I'd love to see it now, I dropped them an email, and they emailed me back saying, right, fill out this application, and we'll see where you get along. So I filled out the application, I sent it in, um, got a response pretty quickly saying, you've been selected to go through to the next application, can you fill out this form? So then again, fill out this form page after page after page, said why I should do it, why I know it'll work, how I'm gonna market it, how I'm gonna make money, how I'm gonna pay you back, everything, just went through absolutely everything. Then I got another email, they're like, right, we want to have a telephone interview with me. So I had a telephone interview with them, told them again why, how, I know it can work, I've been doing it. Um, my passion for the fitness industry, my passion for helping people, my passion for helping people develop, lose weight, kind of my, new vision on how fitness and weight loss and personal training should be. Um, they then passed that one. Then I got invited to another interview, which was a bit more like Dragon's Den. She had like three people sat in front of you, and I had to go up to them with my business plan, which was like this thick at the time. My planning permission, my business plan, all this stuff. My dad had helped me write this. So I had my business plan, I had uh, forecasts, I had profit and loss, I had uh, an exit strategy, I had uh, a blocker. If it wasn't working, what would I do? I had a plan B. I had so much stuff, like loads and loads and loads of stuff. And I had to stand there and present to these three people about why I thought it could work, how I'm gonna make it work again, how I'm gonna make the money back. I had to represent loads and loads of stuff. I was probably up there for a half an hour, maybe. A good half an hour presenting myself, Fitness Works. And at the time, it was called Powerfully Fit. The business was actually meant to be called Powerfully Fit. And then I kind of, I didn't really like the branding. I didn't really like where it was going because I didn't think it was broad enough. Powerfully Fit for me sounded too strength and conditioning, bodybuilding -y and manly. And I obviously need to get away from that because the way I look, I was a bodybuilder at the time. I didn't want to open a facility in the middle of Kenilworth and just be known for bodybuilding, powerlifting and being a bit of a meathead gym. I did not want to be known for that. So I searched health works. I searched loads of different kind of works. And then I thought fitness works. That's a kind of a broad name for everything. I didn't want to sound too healthy. I didn't want to say no. I didn't want to sound too health spary. I didn't want to sound too leisure centery. I didn't want to sound like something from the 1970s. I didn't want to sound crap. I just wanted to sound something different and kind of cool. And Fitness Works popped up, and I ran my dad. I was like, Fitness Works. He's like, That's good because it kind of does everything. And then obviously Fitness Works started with Fitness Works. We had a little dumbbell before, and our branding has kind of progressed since. So then I applied for that, got the website, did this, did that, had a client build me a website. Um, I then was granted a £20,000 loan. I had to kind of planning permission, if you've not ever looked into planning permission for a gym, it's a right ball, like you have to get change of usage, you have to do a lot of stuff before they will give you uh, permission to change a unit from storage and warehouse over to leisure which is gym and kind of kids stuff and loads of things like that it takes a long time to get that or to transition through that well no it takes a long time to get through that process and you can't open a gym unless you've got permission to open a gym sweet I thought my camera stops 20 minutes but don't um so that took about six no maybe four months but this time we'd already found the property um, in actual fact, I found a unit further up from where we are in Kenilworth. So how I found Kenilworth is that I was driving around, I kind of missed out, I was driving around Kenilworth saying to Dad, 
I am opening this gym, we're definitely opening this gym. So we kind of went to loads of little units which were about a quarter of the size of Kenilworth. And then we, we were opening one further up further up, you know where we are now, we were opening one further up on the right hand side which was literally, no lie, it was probably a thousand square foot maybe and I was going to open my own personal strength studio then develop it and build it and build it and build it but I needed parking because they wouldn't give me planning permission unless we had parking so I went into Grime Reaper which is there and said who is this all this parking which is obviously our gym parking now because I'm interested in opening a gym and a tra personal training facility but I need a lot of parking to be able to get permission and he was like that's do you know what uh, the, that unit the unit I have now is just coming up for rent. He's been trying to rent out for a few months. He sold his business out. I've got the keys. Do you want to have a look around? And I was like, this is weird. And anyway, we opened it up and I was like, this is perfect. My dad looked at me and was like, Jack, it's three times the size that we want to open. I was like, ideal. We need this gym. Anyway, to cut a long story short, we opened up in that gym, but we didn't get planning permission until the day before. So we're like, in the end, we're like, we have to order the kit, we have to order the flooring, we have to order the Astro, we have to order so much stuff. So we just went ahead, went ahead, kind of a bit naive and a bit like, we have to get S backs against the wall, which to me was the best way. It's the only way you can do things. I always put my back against the wall and kind of cause myself a lot of stress and pressure. But that kind of gets me through. I perform better in that. Anyway, we got the planning permission granted the day before. Opened the gym and my old man was still a builder at the time and he wasn't really meant to get involved this heavily at the start because he was still going to work in the day and I was going to PT at night but in the first weekend our kind of PayPal account took just under £20,000 in one day and to me I was 23 years old and my bank account's got £20,000 in it and in the end PayPal shut our bank account down because they thought it was money laundering because all my clients came on board we had um, we had over like nearly 100 members sign up in the first weekend. I didn't really know what we were doing. It was all run off spreadsheets, Excel. It was all run off uh, like old Gmails. It was all run proper old and... Uh, but it worked. It was old, but it really worked really well. So that is kind of where I've came from. Obviously, I'm going to do another video about how I've got here and our goals and kind of do a bit more of a, a thing about myself personally because you see all my nutrition and, ed, and you see all my nutrition and my training advice but I've never given my kind of business background or where I've come from really and some people I know will be interested in this and hopefully it might inspire people to do their own facility and kind of do their own thing but recently obviously a lot of people have said a bank of mum and dad, not true, a uh, bank of who knows, like just given stuff, I've been given gyms, mum and dad have bought me everything, and I can tell you now, and you can ask my old, you can ask my old dear, I'm old man, they did not financially help me one bit. They helped me in better ways, they gave me support, and my old man built the whole of every gym you can see. So to me, that's all we needed. Money's easy to find. When people say, oh, uh, I can't start a business because of money, bullshit, it's because you haven't tried. Money is easy to find, but having support and building a gym and, and kind of having finding decent trainers, that is the hard part. And luckily, I've got all three of those. And mum and dad did not buy it for me. Nan and granddad did not buy it for me. My girlfriend didn't give it to me. My nan didn't give it to me. My brother didn't give it to me. My friends didn't give it to me. No one has given me a single thing. Believe it or not, I've done this all off my own back with a lot of support and help from my family and friends. And this is what fitness works do. I want to be the biggest and best facility and biggest and best gyms. I don't know, I to be honest, I don't know where anymore. And you've got to remember, when I was going to say the biggest and the best, I don't mean the biggest bodybuilders gym, I don't mean having the most equipment, I don't mean having every single dumbbell you could ever think of, I just mean having the best of what our gym is all about, functional training, fitness for everybody, correct technique, good community and generally having a good time and making fitness and nutrition and weight loss and health interesting. So I hope that is kind of clears up where I've come from and how fitness work has come about. And the reason I have done this video is because I wanted to do it for a long time, but like I said at the start, I didn't think anyone would really give a shit. But Grant Cardone and kind of being around these people today said, just do it and post it because even if it gets to one person, it helps them or it, it might inspire someone to take that step, then it's worth it. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, give it a share, tag your friends, do what you got to do. If you know anybody who's interested in opening a gym, maybe tag them below and kind of show them that it's not actually that bad. It's a lot of hard work. If you're willing to put the effort in, trust me, it is worth every single minute of the day. And it's worth every single penny I've invested into it. It's worth every single penny we've 
well, it's just worth everything. It's the best thing I've ever done. And we are gonna keep getting bigger and bigger and better. So if you're one of those people who has been bitching and moaning and whining about me, thank you, because it's still support. And if you're those people who've helped me grow and get to where we are today, double thank you. And that's everything. Peace.